Everyone, welcome back to High T Hoops. This is Brian Boche at the Duke of Hoops. And today we have a very special guest, Charlie Skillen from Mail Online. He's the new sports news editor. Charlie, how's it going? Very well, Brian. How are you? I'm doing well. We are missing the Duchess of Hoops today, Skylar, which is probably a good thing because she just talked about Jimmy Butler the entire time. But she's sadly <laughs> missing today. But you're going to fill I'm the sure. spot. I'm sure we can sneak a bit of Jimmy in. <laughs> I, I'm, I am sure we will. Um, but this is our tea time show, Charlie. So thanks for coming on. A little yep. more casual, high level conversations about NBA, NBA culture. It has like been it. a crazy week so far. And we just had some, you just shared some breaking news with me. Uh, do you want to share it with the pod? Yeah. So Steve Nash is Brooklyn's coach next year, which is very Insane. surprising. Uh, Tottenham zone. Sorry, Charlie. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> I, well, I was, I was going to say, I've, I've always been a massive fan of Steve Nash. He, um, like when he was at the Suns, uh, you know, I remember, I remember watching him. He's like my favorite player. His only drawback as a human being is that he's a Tottenham <laughs> fan. Um, yeah, sorry. But apart, apart, apart from that, I like him a lot. Um, no, but this, this is mad surprising though. Like um, you would have thought this would be like a Popovich job. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Steve obviously is an incredible individual, but pretty much like, Every single person who watches NBA has been looking forward to this Brooklyn season. Yep. You know, when they get KD back and, and everything else that goes with it, with Kyrie and everything. Um, and to have someone that has never coached before is bizarre. You know, it's, it's a, to bring it back to football very quickly. It's a lot like what we're seeing with a lot of the top, the top clubs. Yeah. Um, so Juventus have just got in Pirlo. Mm -hmm. uh, Chelsea with Lampard, obviously. Man United with Solskjaer. I know those guys have had a bit of experience before, but... It's, uh, it's an interesting parallel. And um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a really surprising development. What, what do you make of it? Yeah, I, I mean, I love Steve Nash. I think you're right, yeah. um, where he's not only, uh, he wasn't only an incredible player, two-time MVP, but also just a great guy in the league. Like he's always at summer, you know, summer trainings with players. He's always, he's yeah. in the industry, he's speaking on it. So I think he's one of the most beloved NBA players or former NBA players. Yeah. But this is a little, it's a little shocking to me where there's so many personalities to manage on the nets. Mm. I would have thought that they wanted to go after that pop type coach or someone with a little more experience. Mm. Uh, I read everyone got respect. excited. Yeah. Everyone got excited because he sold his house in uh, San Antonio, right? Yeah. Uh, and the, the pops coming here, he's going to end his career with KD and Kyrie instead yeah, of yeah. Uh, DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge <laughs> <laughs> for the Spurs. But I, this could work too. I mean, if, if it's really, you're seeing a lot more first year uh, coaches come in like Ty Lue with the Calves. Um, mm -hmm. You even see, you know, uh, what are some other teams where they have a first year coach coming in with, with Steve Kerr? I mean, obviously came yeah. in, um, but he I did, think he did all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, they're, they're doing all right with these kind of first year coaches. Um, but I wonder if it'll help because they see him more as a peer than as yeah. that stringent coach. And he's managing more of the personalities than like a, this like new players coming onto the team. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it also goes without saying he's not only one of the most beloved NBA players of all time, he's like one of the most intelligent court mm -hmm. players ever, right? You know, he's, this is not a 6'9 guy. This was someone who was at a high level, well, at the very highest level because of their on-court intelligence. You have to think that that is going to transfer over in some way. And like you say, has he won 10 NBA titles as a coach? Obviously not. Yeah. Will he command respect from even the biggest names in the sport. Absolutely. So whatever happens, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. Cause they, the Nets targeted him. They were recruiting him yeah. heavily. So Katie and Kyrie must've been like, this is the style of coach we want. Please go after this person. Don't go after Cause if you bring pop who brings in culture instead of, you know, player yeah. management, that might yeah. ruin what Katie and Kyrie are hoping to have as a part of the Nets. So I'm yeah. excited for it. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't wait. It'd be uh, pretty explosive. Certainly. Yeah, a little Woj bomb, to, Woj bomb to start off the day for me and then you're after <laughs> just in the middle of the bubble, which is cool to see. Right. Um, but we had an incredible lineup of games the last few days. Um, so we're going to start with some game takeaways, starting with the Rockets Thunder last night. Game seven, one of the most – there's been two, a couple game sevens, which we'll get into later. The game sevens mm. are awful, but very entertaining to watch <laughs> <laughs> in terms of play. So what were some of your takeaways from this Rockets Thunder game seven last night? James Harden, defensive MVP, right? Yes, that's was, what that was. <laughs> he's so hot right now. <laughs> it's amazing. That I mean, that block was genuinely incredible. That was an yes. awesome defensive play. Um, this was on a night when he was terrible, terrible. 
What did he go four for fifteen or something? He was. I can't um, believe how awful he is in these moments. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It's it's definitely it's definitely a mark against him, and and people are very quick to bash Harden, and that's yes something you know. And he maybe brings that on himself a little bit, but um, he, you know, that's one of the big sticks to beat him with, isn't it? His, mm-hmm. his performance in these games, but you know, <laughs> defense, Wait, the one play yeah. that mattered. Exactly, and he's the last person in the league you'd probably expect uh, to, to pull make that out. play at the end. Also, all dodgeball team. Uh, I don't know how much yeah. you, is dodgeball a, a, a PE sport in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's certainly not certainly not taken to Will Ferrell levels. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. We know that. <laughs> so that that last dodge on the Lou Dort trying to peg him while he was out of mm. bounds, well, incredible move there. But yeah, I, that game was ridiculous, and to have James Harden suck basically the whole game. Everyone's ready to roast him and just throw yeah, out the yeah. insults as they always. Everyone do. had everyone had it in drafts, didn't they? Yes, yeah, ready ready to be released onto the world. And then he makes the game-winning block uh, incredible to see. But what 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 is going on in James Harden's head in these game sevens? Because he got challenged directly by CP3. With yes, some people are built for this, some people aren't, and he yeah. still struggled. I think he had what twelve points in the at, near the end of the fourth, and and started yeah. to pick it up a little bit. But what is going on in this guy's head? I mean. I think if if anyone could work that out, they'd uh, they'd have done it already, wouldn't they? Um, it's it is it's just a bizarre phenomenon, isn't it? I mean, even though people like to bash him, it shouldn't be forgotten. The guy is putting up numbers, season in season out, like we've never seen, and that's not an exaggeration. That's just a fact. We have even never in this seen series. the numbers, even in this series, and and even in this season when you know he wasn't really in huge contention for the MVP. Um, He's the numbers have been incredible, but it is it does get to these games. And just to touch on on Chris Paul, I mean, how sweet it would have been for him. I know he just fell away slightly, but um, I, I was a little bit gutted for him because he's done so well this season, Chris Paul. Yeah, and bringing them back that game six that set up the game seven, where the Rockets should have won that game. I mean, they should have sealed yep. it. Um, yep. For some reason, Westbrook had the ball in his hands for the last two minutes instead of Harden, which is another knock. But CP3, yeah. when CP3 hit the hit the couple threes, I think he spanked Covington on his way by, gave him a little slap <laughs> in the ass, and then he was just staring at Harden on the free throw line. Um, that was a great meme of him just staring directly at him away from the hoop. This, uh, this is the this is the drama and like the this is what we love, isn't it? This yeah. is like what <laughs> this NBA is what drama. makes the NBA these little storylines and you know the, the just the personalities. It's it, it's incredible, and I think none more so than in this series. It's, yeah, and for, out, out of the whole thing, really, like yeah. I, it's just it's just a shame that it doesn't continue. I know. I think. Well, I mean, whatever happens, I think Chris Paul. This Chris Paul season has just been incredible. If you think back to the start, when like no one, no one even thought he wanted to play for him. Yeah. Let alone they would do anything this season, and he's kind of taken on this like elder statesman role, hasn't he? Yeah, and brought um, the young team up. They weren't even supposed to make the playoffs this year. Exactly. And he, he's, he's been key. Like, I, I know we're going to talk about like, Lou Dort later yeah. and, and people like that. He's been key to all of that. Dennis Schroeder, mm-hmm. um, Gilgis Alexander, obviously. Like, he, he's, been, he's been so key to all of that. And it's just – it's been a bit of a privilege to kind of watch him, I think. And you're season. right with the, with the drama with, the, with Houston trading him to OKC for Westbrook. Yeah. Exactly. And, then, exactly. and then having Chris Paul outperform Westbrook at every stage of the series. Hundred uh, percent. I mean, it, it wasn't even close to that. Was no. it? I mean, Westbrook was hurt and was coming back from injury, but CP3 was that he alphaed James Harden in Game Six, <laughs> and I can't believe he passed it on the last possession. You know, that last one, he drives in, kicks it out, yeah. almost turns it over on the kickout, and Lou Dort is taking your final shot. Like, I cannot believe he said everything to set up game seven and then didn't just ISO one-on-one try to win the game himself. I mean, it's sort of, it's been, that's quite emblematic of his season though, isn't it? He's, you know, this is, he has led the team and team in the biggest sense of the word. So yeah. he's kind of led those players. So you're being nice, Charlie. Of, that's, yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. But that's kind of what he's been about this season, isn't it? So. Yeah, that last minute was also just, I've never seen, I think it was a 16 minute last minute. It took 16 minutes to go through the last minute of that game with the flops and the fouls. Oh my God. It was painful. (laughs) 
Very painful. But painful to watch. But, 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 but the drama was incredible. But the Rockets are moving on. The Thunder bounced in the first round. Chris Paul, another early exit in the playoffs. Uh, yeah. Is he a Hall of Famer to you? How do you think this is going to mark his legacy? Because you're right. He's done incredible this season. Didn't really have the supporting cast. No. So is this a mark against him? I feel like he almost got, you know, he almost earned more respect in this playoff than. Oh, than 100%. He, he's yeah. gone, he, he's moved up a level in terms of all that for me. Mm-hmm. Um, because, because he is the figurehead of that team and he's, yeah. he's shown a different side to his game. You know, he, in, in terms of being that elder statesman, yep. he's, got the, he's got the ball back as well. Yeah. You know, because obvi- obviously on the Rockets, he didn't have the ball. James he, Harden, yeah. If you're on a team with James Harden, you don't have the ball. Um, and I think he's, he's, gone, he's gone back to that style of his play. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I, look, I don't think anyone can look at a Rockets Thunder series that went to game seven and say that that's a mark against Chris Paul. Yeah, I just hope he finds a team where he can win and get some playoff success. Yeah, you know, even if it's later in his career, I know his contract is huge, so it's hard to move him around. But uh, I would love to see him. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. Get, I'd love to see him get some uh, get some success later on. Uh, but let's move on to the Denver Jazz Game Seven. I'm a Nuggets fan, yep. uh, as we've discussed. Uh, love the Nuggets. I, I haven't been too bullish on them. They seem like they're still a couple years away from kind of peaking. And mm. they have played not very good so far in, in this series, but fought back from 3 1. We're at game seven. Did you yes. watch the end of this game, Charlie? I think it was almost more incredible than the last bit of Rocket Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> it was, in terms of crazy games. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have to forgive Jamal Mariami for, for that at the end. I mean, I'm not sure why he didn't just run out the clock. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was almost like his J.R. Smith moment. Yeah, just like, oh, fast break, I got to go. And just not yeah, thinking yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, just like, mate, what are you doing? But, <laughs> and then um, the layup, that was like something I'd miss in like a rec game. Because yeah. I'm tired and old. <laughs> well, thank God for Mike Conley, eh? Yeah. Oh, the in and out. So if you didn't yeah. watch the end of this game, uh, it was Denver's up two. Uh, Donovan Mitchell has the ball. I think there's one possession left. I don't, I don't think they have a two for one. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's uh, the last second. Gary Harris, who just sucked from, from the offensive floor, but had a good defensive performance, is mm. guarding Donovan Mitchell. He pokes the ball loose for Mitchell. They have a three-on-one fast break with, what, six seconds, five seconds left? And like if you that, said, yeah, if that, yeah. he could have just dribbled into the corner away from everyone. They mm. win the game. Instead, they do a classic three-on-one fast break, passes it to Craig. Craig misses a wide-open layup. <laughs> Rudy Gobert instantly gets the rebound, kicks it to Conley, who gets a good look from three. Yeah, yeah. So in and out. Done. Yeah. Uh, that was a very makeable shot. Mike Conley can't shoot either. No one could shoot in this mm. game. What was 80 to 80? I think it was the lowest scoring game in the bubble. It was quite retro, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it, was like, it was like watching uh, March Madness here in the States um, yeah, yeah, yeah. with two university teams. Um, but what were some of your takeaways from this game? Or well, the series? I think it's just a shame the series is over. Yeah. I mean, Jamal Murray and Donovan Mitchell, that has been... That battle. Wow. That battle's been like one of the best I can remember. I've got a little stat for you, Brian. Mm-hmm. You like this? Hit me with so it. So there are f- four players in history that have scored, o- have scored over 50 multiple times in a series, and two of them were in this series. Holy shit. It was That's Mitchell and, and Murray? Yeah. And then the other, Damn. do you want to know the other two? Yes. Alan Iverson in 01. Okay. Yep. And, yep. Uh, and MJ in 88. And That's, that, a That's, good the, crowd. Only, that's the only time, yeah, it's a good company to be in, right? That's the only time it's ever been done. Um, that for the first six games, that was incredible. I know they kind of, it didn't really happen for them um, in game seven. Uh, no. It was more, it was more about the teammates. I think that was always going to happen at some point. It was amazing to get yeah. kind of six, six games out of them. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of a shame that this series is over. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Murray has a similar thing going on with Kawhi. No way. That, this, is the, <laughs> this is the thing. Like this is, this series felt, like it's teams that are still a couple years away or have a couple yeah. missing pieces. You know, that's why I think you see Murray and, uh, and Mitchell stepping up is, you know, the second leading scorer for the jazz out, yeah. you know, out for the season didn't come in with the, with the, uh, with the nuggets, they lost Will Barton. Um, some of the other yeah. players weren't stepping up and playing very well. So they yeah. both had to kind of ISO win the games by themselves. And you saw them dueling doing this. Mm-hmm. But the wings are just so good for the Clippers. Like Paul George or Kawhi or both of them guarding Murray and double teaming him. Yeah. I just can't see them getting by that. 
Oh, yeah. I, you, you're going to have a few sleepless nights leading up to that series, I think. Uh, well, I, I picked the Clippers <laughs> to win, so the whole thing. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm sure you did. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I know the team. Um, but what was good to see is, you know, Jokic has struggled a little bit in this series. Yep. I think Gobert is a monster. But with yep. Murray not hitting, with everyone not hitting any shots, he stepped mm. up. And he came in He came in when they, I think he had 30 and 14 or something, but um, he really came through and kind of provided that next level of support and scoring and leadership that the Nuggets didn't have. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, we know it's not a premier defensive side, but that side to their no. game was a lot better. Yeah. It was a lot better in this It was series, a lot better at the end, yeah. The yeah, first four uh, games, wow. That was yeah. just a sliding doors. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and like you say, that's just the difference, isn't it, between – a Nuggets and a Clippers or, 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 or whatever, you know, that just the that next, teams. Yeah. the next yeah. round of the playoffs, basically that that's just the difference that, you know, barring a miracle. And I really hope it happens for you. Um, doesn't look like it's quite going to happen. And equally with, with Jokic as well, it's going to be like you say, I mean, guarding uh, Kawhi and Paul George is going to be a different kettle of fish, isn't it? Oh, I don't know what they're going to do. And but, but we lost, I was going to say was we hard. lost, we lost Sorry, our God. biggest advantage where usually if we have home games, it's in Denver, which is a mile high yep. and all the other teams are tired from the altitude and we're good. And we lost <laughs> that completely. Yeah, it's, all, it's all a Mickey Mouse's house. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it, like I said, it was quite retro, wasn't it? That mm-hmm. sort of low scoring and it was all centered around a big really. Yep. In, in Jokic, it was, it was, it was, it was a bit more of, of a team game than just, Jamal Murray against Mitchell, yep. which which was kind of the theme of the first of the yeah. first six games. Well, I think that's what we saw as Murray and Mitchell were, were dueling. And then when uh, when Murray couldn't hit, when Mitchell was struggling a little bit, Denver had Jokic mm. to go to, and the Jazz exactly. didn't really have that secondary person. No, exactly. I mean, and, w- and what do you think happens for Utah now? Because, like, am I mad? Like, a team with Mitchell, who, who, has, who has really been kind of probably the overwhelming player since – you know, uh, the restart. Last few years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, a team with Mitchell and Gobert, they, they should probably be doing better, shouldn't they? Yeah, I, I think I, like losing your second leading score obviously kills you. But you're right. Mm-hmm. There's, I, I think Mitchell, I think this was a very good restart and playoff experience for Mitchell because there's a lot of mm-hmm. questions of can he lead a team like he did a couple years ago through the playoffs? Yeah. Can he be that alpha? I think he's proved he can. I think mm. the Jazz have to make a decision if they want to keep Gobert or not, or if they need to like pile more wings on because their wings were bad. Yeah, I mean, I, they've got to keep them together, no? I think I mean, they still I don't think they don't like each other. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Gobert gave him COVID. I don't, no, I don't that's know. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was about to say. I thought it might be a bit dodgy. Um, <laughs> well, he did. Yeah, no, I think. Oh, actually, it's not proven, so don't yeah. fact check us on that. But <laughs> yeah. allegedly, gave him COVID. I mean, yeah, that's, that's like what happened as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, there, there are stories of that relationship's been improved a bit, but you know, there's only so many players of Gobert standards to go around. If you've got one on your team, like you should try and keep one. He's yeah. still, he's still probably the NBA's best defensive player. Yeah, one of them still. So, you, so, I mean, especially so, a specialist. Like, without, without question, one of them. Yep. So I mean, it's if a it tough was me, call. I'd, I'd, I'd try and keep them together and, and just make the pieces around them much like hopefully better. Yeah. Um, and, and try and get a game plan that plays to both their strengths, which I admittedly is hard. Mm-hmm. But, um, I don't envy no, that GM. Could, no, no. Well, good luck. Uh, good luck to Denver. I know you'll be, Thank I know you. you'll be glued to it. It'll be fun no matter what. Um, but let's move <laughs> on to, <laughs> let's move on to the Eastern Conference here with some of the, yep. the Eastern Conference semis. We had the Heat Bucks start their first two games. Celtics Raptors start their first two games. And the Heat and Celtics both take the first two games from the higher seeds. Yeah. Well, this is, this is, uh, this is what we've kind of seen in the East, isn't it? Yeah. This is, uh, I, the Celtics, they're just a playoff team, aren't they? I, they have really come through. It's so impressive. Yeah, yeah I mean, they've just, got, they've just got good players everywhere, haven't they? Mm-hmm. You know, wh- whether, whether, it's, whether it's Tatum Brown, whether it's Walker, whether it's Marcus Smart, they're, they're just players that would fit in anywhere, you know? Well, this is the antithesis to the Jazz, where they have Gobert, yeah. and they've spent money on Gobert, and he's the center. Yeah. Boston's like, we, we'll just hack together a center. We don't really care for that position. We're just going to have a bunch yeah. of wings. And yep. it's working. I mean, it works yep. when Marcus Smart hits six threes in the fourth quarter. 
which yeah, any team's going to lose to that. But you're right. These wings and, and Tatum is, they're really stepping up. It's impressive to see. And I mean, it's, we, we've seen it a few times in Boston, haven't we? Where regular season, everyone sort of likes to write them off and saying they're doing X, Y, and Z badly. And then it gets to the players. It gets to like the real sort of big boys time. And they just never disappoint. They're, they're just, there's just something about those names, the Celtics. For a long time, yeah. we had it with the San Antonio, right? Where, you know, you just write them off at your peril. And you can, you can talk about, uh, you know, Giannis doing this for the Bucks and whatever. But like, when it comes down to it, it's, it's, it's those teams with the real playoff knowledge who've, yeah. you know, they've got down to game sevens and they've... They've, they've been tested. They've been tested, and, and that's and at the end of the day, when, when it all comes down, when it all comes down to these games, you know, no one remembers what was happening in January. Yeah, like yeah. you know, and 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 I'm sure you got all the for the last couple of years. I, I remember reading like a couple of think pieces about where the Celtics were going wrong in the regular season and that, and time and time again, they just confound all those expectations. And you know, for me, they're quite clearly going to get through this Raptors series now. Yeah, I think Kemba has provided that leadership and, you know, yeah. what, what was a well, little bit missing. Up as well, he? Yeah, I think he, he gained a lot of confidence in the last series. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he's massively stepped up as, as that figure. You mm-hmm. know, that kind of, again, again, like, obviously he's not as old as Chris Paul, but that kind of, that figure, what, what Chris Paul is doing for the Thunder mm-hmm. in, terms of, in, in terms of bringing those, bringing those other guys along. Yeah, and he's not, he doesn't have that ego. So with Tatum and Brown, and you know, Tatum's kind of the clear star that's stepping up. Brown is super close. Um, mm. But he doesn't need to be the Kyrie with the ball in his hands all the time. No, I was, was going to say, it. it's strange that never happened with Kyrie, isn't it? I know, no, it doesn't. I don't think he stepped up. But you're right, like Tatum in his rookie year took this team pretty deep in the playoffs. They have this experience together. Exactly. And the Raptors were just missing that one little piece called Kawhi. Uh, and they, they're <laughs> alpha dog in this series where yeah. I, we picked the Raptors, both uh, Skylar and I picked the Raptors to make the finals. Uh, mm. And they just, you know, I have, we can talk about Siakam a little bit later and who's not hot right now, but they yeah. just don't have that alpha. That's really going to drive them to mm. win. No, but the, it's a, it's just a failing of a collective performance, isn't it? Yeah. By like Lowry, Van Vliet, Siakam, as you pointed out, they've all been poor. Um, they were 2 0 down against the Bucks this time last year, or this yep. round last year, obviously. And obviously they had Kawhi and they they quite clearly got through, but this feels a lot different. This feels yeah. like there's no chance for them really. A neutral court, um, so they don't have their you know home court exactly. advantage in Toronto. Uh, which which is which is huge. huge. Like as with the Nuggets, with the yeah. altitude and stuff, you know, people going up to Canada, you know, that was so big for them um, last year. And I think, you know, it's one of those, isn't it, where obviously the team was going to try and do the best they can. They've still got some players that would grace any NBA team. Mm-hmm. But without Kawhi, you know, it, it it was a huge shock that they won the championship last year. Mm-hmm. You know, it, and they played so well and Kawhi was at the center of it all, bringing people like Siakam with him. And, you know, I, it's just a step too far, isn't it? You know, this, this, is not, this is not your regular NBA champion building, a, building on that, building a dynasty. This, yeah. is, this is something else entirely where it was unexpected and one of the, one of the most incredible like championship performances for a long time. Yep. And it's yep. just a bit of a step too far. Celtics are... The Celtics play, have stepped up. Are you know, playing this, better as a team. They're just yes. playing better as a team than the Raptors. I mean, are, for me, this is done in two games' time. I mean, may, maybe the Raptors get one game. But yeah, I, I think there's a lot of luck that comes into these series. You know, we see with mm. a lot of these come down to the last second. And the first game, you know, they couldn't. The Raptors couldn't make a shot. They're going to lose that mm. one. This one, they should have won. I, I think they played better. I think they stepped up. Uh, yeah. Marcus Smart hitting six threes. Like you game plan for like, okay, let's let Marcus Smart take six. Maybe he'll make two on a good day, but him making six for them to lose it. So, I mean, they had a shot to to win or tie, I think at the end for Van Vliet, but they just could not pull it together and losing that one. You just lose all your momentum. Like that's like a fight back. You're one, one, then you're looking good in this series to maybe squeak out a win being Mm -hmm. down two Oh, in the bubble. I think you're, I think they'll fight back. I think they've a little more fight than maybe one game. I think it'll go six. Yeah. Um, but you're right. I mean, especially with Brad Stevens being such a good coach against Nick Nurse, 
two-time BPL uh-huh. champion, by the way, yes. Yes. and coach of the year. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just don't think the Raptors have quite enough from what I've seen so far. The Celtics are just taking it. It's not like the Celtics are, are letting yeah. the, you know, the Celtics are grabbing this. And, like this is our all, time. All, all without Hayward as well. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting, we're getting some weird minutes from, from Wanamaker and some bench guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. If the Raptors can do it at all, their bench is better. Yeah. It, it, Serge Ibaka and people like that. That is, if they can pull it back, I mean, I don't think they'll win this series now, but if they can pull back a couple of games, I think that could possibly be the difference. But yeah. I mean, do you, the think Celtics... the, do you think the Celtics Sorry. are going to make the finals? Regardless of who wins Bucks Heat? Um, I think if the Bucks, I don't think this will happen, by the way. But if, if the Bucks take that series from being 2 nil down, mm-hmm. I think the momentum and Yanis. Um, I think that would probably take them through to the finals, but I expect them to lose yeah. that series now. Um, and I think I think the Celtics uh, Celtics Heat would be a great series. Yeah. So let's move uh, on to that uh, one. I think I think the Celtics yeah. are going to make the finals now. I don't think I, I think yeah. you're right. I don't think the Bucks are going to win. The the Celtics do terrible against the Bucks. They don't really have an yeah. answer for Giannis. Where yeah. Bam and the team defense for the Heat seem to be containing him relatively well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but let's move on to that series. They had Game Two last night. Uh, I listened to it yep. on the radio. So I was like, very old, school. A very old <laughs> school listening while I was driving. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? They were, yeah. they, that was one of the sloppiest last minutes of basketball I have ever seen. It's been a theme, isn't it? It's been a theme. Yeah. <laughs> it's awful. I mean, just like saving the inbound Jimmy Butler, like falling out of bounds, throwing it directly to Brooke Lopez for a layup. Mm-hmm to yep. make it a two point game instead of a four point game when he could have literally just thrown it into the air as high as he could and done better. Yep. Uh, they almost completely collapsed here and yep. two bailout calls. Chris Middleton gets called, uh, you know, he, he shot a three kind of wasn't fouled was, you know, there's a lot mm. of Dragic, uh, probably didn't foul him, got the three free throws to tie it. And then Jimmy Butler, as time expired, got yep. a foul call. Then he got to shoot to win the game. But what were your takeaways from this one? Because the heat. I mean, what, what was was that a foul? The one on Butler for you? Uh, I don't think either of them were fouls. I think you let them yeah. play. It's so slow in the last minute. Yeah. And you're the refs are deciding the game basically. Yeah, I mean, what they can't do though, and what they can't do, the Bucks though, is allow because that's true, right? But they can't allow that to paper over the cracks. Yeah. Of why they're on the verge of another playoff exit, having one three quarters of their regular season games over the last two years, they're going to, fo- they're like, unless, unless they rally around and uh, do an incredible turnaround, which as we've seen is infinitely harder in the bubble. Yep. Um, even though your boys managed to do it. Um, <laughs> I mean, that, that raises serious questions about them, doesn't it? Yeah. Cause I the mean, heat beat them and, in this game. It wasn't, it wasn't close. The heat almost blew it, but they, they had a commanding lead the whole time. They were, they the were heat just have their number, don't they? Yeah, the Heat have their number. They like, as you say, with Bam and and those other guys, they they've got a plan for Yanis. They allow Jimmy Butler to do his thing, and he mm-hmm. like Jimmy Butler. This whole series has been playing like his life depends on it. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of his teammates came to the fore in this last game with Dragic, and Dragic yeah. led yeah. the scoring, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is amazing. They're that deep. Yeah, you know they. If exactly. he's if he can step, and that's what I like about Jimmy Butler is he can have that mm. alpha performance. I think he had forty in game yeah. one, his playoff high, yeah. but then he can take a back seat a little bit and still distribute. And his defense is still his two way game is unbelievable. Yeah. And he can let Jogic step up, or he can let right. Hero step up, or Bam, or whoever else on the team. Well, that is playoffs, isn't it? That is playoff yeah. basketball. That's what. That's, that's where. I mean, that's where maybe the the Bucks are falling short. That. Mm-hmm that they don't have that second gear. They don't have, they don't, you know, Yanis isn't either, isn't able to do that or, or, or he's failed by the other guys, you know, yep. um, you, you don't get, you don't get to play our finals. You don't win championships by having one guy and, and four others. Yep. Um, yep. And, and Jimmy, but as you say, Jimmy Butler was able to do that for, for this series. And, it's a real, it's a real big mark against the Bucks. This isn't it. Even more yeah. so, even more so than last year yeah. when they lost yeah. the eventual champions. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, I don't think anyone, anyone thinks the Heat are going to be the eventual champions. Yeah, I mean, because um, they lost to the Raptors with Kawhi, and because Kawhi yeah. was there, I think that had a big difference. Now it's like, okay, you're losing to the Heat. Like the Heat weren't expected to do anything. They're kind of rising in the yeah. bubble. 
and you can't even take them on Giannis? Mm. I mean, do you think that Middleton, Bledsoe, the, these guys, do, are, I mean, I'm, they've been fantastic in the regular season, the last two mm. years at least. Do we think they are of the level that Giannis needs to be the second and third best players? Yes, I, I don't think so. I mean, we're obviously right. not seeing it. Where Middleton yep. has been playing well, though, so that's why it's hard yep. to say, okay, Middleton's been playing well. Giannis is, when Giannis struggles, he's still like a 38 and 8. So he's still, it's incredible. Gonna, it's incre- no matter what, he's going he's gonna to make a huge impact. But I don't mm-hmm. know, like Bledsoe continually disappoints in the bubble. Um, yep. You know, Brooke Lopez is, is fine. But it just, I, they just don't have that. I don't know. It's like when you watched the Raptors last year and Van Vliet was, became a killer. Lowry, yeah. like, stepped. You don't, yeah, I don't yeah. see that from the supporting cast and the Bucks. They're not stepping up right. and taking these games like you see in other teams. It's Yanis or nothing, isn't it? Yeah. Like Marcus that, Smart. The, Marcus Smart drove the Celtics to win. Yeah. Yeah. The exactly. Bucks don't have an equivalent right now. No, no. And, and, and as I said, that is, that is just the difference. And that is, you know, you can get by in the regular season from that you uh, and let's not take away let's not take away from two things how brilliant they were in the regular mm-hmm. season and have been for the past two years yep um but you, you but you can get by playing like that and then when it really comes down to the crunch when teams like the celtics pick up when you know if you were to get to a finals when the when the clippers or golden state or wh- whoever it may be when when they get to those games like you that that just doesn't fly anymore. It falls apart. Yep. Yeah, that just doesn't fly anymore. Um, I suppose the other thing we we should say is that the Bucks kind of playoff playoffs this year is kind of going to be remembered for more noble reasons than yes these these you know whether whether Giannis is supporting cars on on the best and I I think it's drawn a the NBA seems like quite angry at the minute and and I think I think they deserve credit obviously for that no matter what happens. Yeah. I mean, basketball, this, the reason for the, you know, the strike last week was because Mm -hmm. they didn't feel like the NBA was doing enough. They were doing enough and using the platform. And you even saw Donovan Mitchell after they lost, I mean, he loses a heartbreaking game seven at the last minute. He's worked so hard for this. He's devoted his life to this, but then he Mm -hmm. goes to the press conference afterward and says, the pain I feel right now is nothing compared to, you know, all of the black families out there who had been affected by police brutality uh, yeah. you know, by police shooting family members. And so he put it back in context immediately. And that's top of all of these players' minds. Yeah. And the yeah, Bucks and it, didn't lead it, it. And it has to be. And yeah, the Buc- Bucks led it. H- having said that, <laughs> they're going to lose this series. They're, they're, yeah, they might, they're probably going to lose this series. And if they fight back, you know, that I, I'm excited to see both of these uh, teams down 0-2 fight back and see what we can do with these series. Yeah. I mean, what, what does this mean for the Bucks going forward, do you think? I think they're going to have to shake it up a little bit. They lost yep. Brogdon, which was a big loss this yep. year. Uh, yep. And I think they're going to have to figure out how to uh, build a supporting cast um, or how they can convince Giannis to stay. It seems like Giannis wants to stay, and he seems like he's a little bit uh, more yeah. traditional. Um, but, yeah, they're going to have to figure out how to rework this team to give them the yeah, supporting I've, uh, I've seen Giannis in all sorts of mad uniforms I know. on Twitter. That's the jersey it gets, swaps. It gets pretty tiresome, doesn't it? Yeah, and I mean, we're going to get in – we're going to get into that and uh, stupid things people are arguing about on the internet. So, okay, so yeah, we'll to <laughs> save it for that. All right, let's move on to our next segment. Who's hot and who's not where this week I'm rebranding it to who's built for this versus who's not built for this on, on Chris. Thank Paul's. you. CP3, yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. We already covered it. My first one was Harden's defense. Harden's defense is built for this. I can't believe that's what decided the game. No one would that's have predicted it. Yeah. Uh, but who do you have as hot right now uh, in the playoffs? I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to butter you up here and go for Jokic. Nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. I didn't <laughs> have to do right, it myself. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Well, I want to come I, I want to make a good impression on, on the <laughs> Um no, I just I, I just think, you know, it, you everyone's been talking so much about Jamal Murray that mm-hmm. it was a real reminder of his capabilities. You know, uh, does it extend to keeping the Clippers out? Probably not. Mm-hmm. But to have 30 and 14 in game seven to, to take that series. Let's not forget they were three, one down Yep. in this series. And, and he's a bit of a throwback and no one, you know, is, is, he's not the prettiest to watch. Um, but that, you know, even that last shot over Gobert. Was, the little baby uh, hook. 
Come on. Yeah, this is, exactly. What do you mean he's not pretty to watch? This is virtually my game on the pickup court is Jokic. <laughs> <laughs> throw me in the high post. I'm going to look awkward and unathletic. Maybe yeah. throw up a couple hook shots, distribute. Uh, but he really came through. They, in, they, were, they only scored 15 points in the third, 15 points in the fourth, and it was yeah. mostly Jokic. Yeah, exactly. And I, it, it, this is what we've been talking about. It's, it's, about, it's about these other, you know, you can let someone else have the lead, but then you've really got to come through. When it gets to these game sevens, it's all about the team. And um, I think Jokic definitely did that. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing to see. Um, we've talked about Marcus Smart enough. Uh, talked about Tatum and Butler a little bit. Uh, you mentioned a little bit of Lou Dort action in the intro. Do you want to, is that one of your call outs? Yeah. Well, for an undrafted rookie to have this performance in an NBA playoffs, like, 30 points in game seven. After, after an awful game three as well. Yes. I mean, this, and this is, again, this is like testament to Thunder as a team mm -hmm. and everyone kind of rallying around each other, led by Chris Paul. Obviously, he's another one of these, like, CP protégés, isn't he? Yep. Um, but, you know, for, for an undrafted rookie to be deciding things in Game 7 of an NBA playoffs, like, I can't remember much like that. Yeah, and he's the one playing – he was brought in to play defense against Harden. He was a defensive yeah. specialist. And yeah. for him to go in – and you're right, they left him wide open for every three. They, they, they did. They're just like, yes, take it, Lou Dort. You can't come through. Yeah. Yeah. And a rookie in game seven can't, I mean, this is what we've talked about. These role players, you need the yeah. Marcus smarts. You need the Lou Dort stepping up. Even the Rockets Covington came through two straight threes, good defensive yeah. plays in the last couple minutes there. The role players have to step up and make a mark because Lou Dort led the both teams in scoring, right? Lou so Dort. That, I mean, I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? That's incredible. When you, when you're playing with all these established names, you, you're on the court with MVPs. Mm -hmm. as an as an undrafted rookie and you're doing that i think that's no Against matter what two else, mvps yeah and exactly. the point god yeah yeah no matter what to be honest if he never makes another point in the nba i think he's kind of done his job <laughs> yes I, yeah i think i saw on twitter uh dortlando uh rebranded yes, like as that. dortlando yeah i love yes, that one like it but man he really stepped up and he he seems like whenever he drives to the basket, it's like his whole body is moving. I don't know what he does, but he's just like mm. a cyclone of energy going into the yeah. paint, shooting threes. And he he's had all the confidence player. in the world. He's a fun player to watch, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it as a little bit of a thicker player myself, like that defensive stopper. <laughs> the, you yeah. know, he's strong, like stopping hard in the paint, bowling people over. It was great to see. <laughs> Go to work. Yeah. Yeah, uh, shout out to the thick crew. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've now compared myself to Jokic and Dort. So hopefully I need to I need to get it back a little bit after <laughs> Um All right. Who is not hot right now? Who doesn't have it? What are some of your top ones from the last uh, week or so? I mean, you mentioned Siakam mm -hmm. earlier. I mean, he he he's just been terrible, isn't he? I don't know. Yeah. I'm 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 loath to kind of slag people off too much. But if Toronto were going to get anything out of this, they need those players to be, to be on it. And he's not been the only one. It's hard to dig mm -hmm. him out and not say the same thing for Larry and not say the same thing for Van Vliet. But he's, he's just been so poor, like, throughout. Not just, you know, not just game two, but th throughout. And, yeah. and it's emblematic of the Raptors and um, why they're going home, yep. basically, his performances. They... They really miss the Kawhi consistent, you know, 20 to 30 to 35 points a game. Where even yeah. Giannis, when he has a bad game, he's still putting up 30 or 25. Yeah. Siakam yeah. at 12, 13, four, like, that is not enough as the leader of a team. No, absolutely not. I mean, there's, there's any, there's 90% of the NBA can get you that. You know, <laughs> you know there's... It, it, he's a role player right now. If play, he, yeah, he, exactly. But they're not looking, they're not looking to him as a role player and that's it's just it's just not good enough and it's it's why it's why the raptors are, are bowing out now as opposed to being dragged by Kawhi. i mean it, it's almost testament to Kawhi, isn't it mm -hmm. it's test it's testament to him and his ability to drag the level of a team up and drag the level of those around him and that that is really i mean i think particularly if he wins a third championship with a third team Yep. You're going to have, he's, got, he's, he's up there, isn't he, Kawhi? Yeah. Um, he's moving and that up. Is, 
And that is what separates those players. You know, it, it's, it becomes a privilege to play with them and, mm-hmm. and they have to be, and that's true of any sport. You know, when, when you have players like that on your team, you can't help as a professional to be, for, for your level to go up to, you know, heights you probably didn't even think it could. Yep. Or just um, the confidence and the belief. The exactly, Raptors said this last year. Yeah. Like they knew they had the best player on the floor at all times, which meant yep. they thought they could win. Now yep. they don't. Exactly. And, and, and so while it's a bit harsh, because there's other, obviously other factors at play, I think Siakam has been kind of the figurehead of that. And he's coming for the most abuse. And yeah. we're going to pile, yeah. pile that on. Well, we'll see. Like Murray struggled in the first couple of games as well against the Jazz and then really yeah. stepped up. So I think you're right. If the Raptors are going to fight back, it has to be Siakam leading. And you yeah. have to have that consistent 30-point score that the he's rest just, of the team can got, depend on. Exactly. He's just got to be better, isn't he? Yeah. Um, I have some not hots as I've been watching these games. Uh, these are all, yep. I'm going to just bring them all. The refs and the last minute of games are excruciating. And <laughs> you see this with, you know, I, with, with the premier league, with football in general, as Americans become uh, more excited about watching the free flowing of the game, how fast it is fast paced. It's always in play in football in basketball. You get, four, three quarters, and then, you know, seven eighths of a quarter, all pretty consistent. And then the yeah. last minute takes 16 or 20 minutes and it's just foul and flopping and stopping and free throws. And it's awful. It's really unattractive for a casual viewer as well. Yes. No, it's, it's bad for the sport and bad for the league. If we're trying to win yeah. over a UK audience here, Charlie, to exactly. get into the NBA, you can't have a 16 minute fourth quarter where there's actually no basketball being played and it's just free no. throws and out of bounds plays. No, exactly. It's it, it's something they've got to address. I know it's something they've been trying to do for a while, um, and unfortunately, again, we like we go back to the Bucks thing. What were they talking about afterwards? They were talking about the refs. Yeah, Everyone, really, even Houston. Houston was all about the refs and Scott Foster and having a bad shock. relationship with Chris Paul. <laughs> yeah, Houston being all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's their that's their favorite line, isn't it? Yeah. But um, we shouldn't be talking about them. It's it's a shame because we've seen. As we talk through, we've got so many interesting narratives at play. And then there's one really uninteresting narrative, which is... The refs. The refs. The and calls, the bailouts, yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, I, like, I'll share your frustration. And it's, um, like, like you say, particularly for a UK audience, I, I think the sport's massively growing over here. I think interest is massively growing. Um, but, I mean, that's not... I mean, diehard NBA fans don't want to see that. So, mm-hmm. let alone kind of people that are just dipping their toes in. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not attractive to watch. It doesn't bring the best out of the personalities. It doesn't bring the best out of the game and the sport itself. So I, I agree with you. It's really frustrating. Yeah. And in the all-star game, they, they trialed the, I think they set a, they set a, um, a score to get to that target score. And then they took the clock mm. off. So at the end of the, in the fourth quarter, they said, okay, the first team to 150 points wins the game. And yeah. Like, so, so like the, like the all-star game, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I think that and that became incredible to watch because there were no timeouts, there were no, you know, fouling to get to the line and to stop the yeah. clock. And it was just a free-flowing game. So I do wonder what the NBA will do because having your two premier games both have 16 minute last minutes is yeah. tough. It, yeah, it, it it is it it's no good, but I mean think how good that All-Star game was. That was so much fun. I know. It was a lot. And of fun. and I, and it, it beforehand everyone was like what you know what's going on i I know i know it's like it's a bit more of an established concept in the states isn't it Mm -hmm. um that 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 system of scoring but it works so well and and during that i I remember i was watching it live and i was just looking at twitter and everyone was just blowing up about that yeah um i I mean and adam silver's not afraid to try things is he no i mean we're in the bubble right now that's a testament to it in the bubble we had a play we had a play in Yes. Solomon. Um, I would have preferred like a World Cup style thing. Oh, the group um, stage. The groups would have been really fun. The group stage would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, maybe the Kings would have got through, but. <laughs> <laughs> you um, can dream. Yeah, I don't think so. We're think proudly hanging on to the record of uh, being the team with the longest time out of the playoffs. And yep. Long, yep. long will that continue, I'm afraid. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, I. I, I Adam Silver's certainly not afraid to try things. And I think that would be really interesting because they've got to combat it in some way. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And that's a great segue into stupid things people are arguing about on the internet. 
One of them is the last, you know, the Scott Foster stuff, the ref stuff. Um, Another one that I want to pose this question to you, Richard Jefferson yesterday tweeted, is Giannis just a Pippin and still needs his Jordan? So what do you think, Charlie? Is Giannis not the number one guy alpha dog on a team? Does he need someone like a KD or Steph Curry to actually get them over the hump? I think that's massively unfair. First, he's a Scottie <laughs> Pippen, um, but also to, to Yanis. Uh, I think Yanis is a, is a Jordan who needs a Pippen, really, than, than the other way around. Uh, we we, we touched answer. on it before. Yeah, mm-hmm. we touched on it before. Um, as, as brilliant as those players have been the last two years, those names, Middleton, Bledsoe, they, they don't roll off the tongue as easily as some of the bigger stars in the league. Mm-hmm. You, you, you need those guys in, in the squad. Don't get me wrong. You need those guys on the team. But, you know, when Yanis is only making 23 or whatever, like you, you just need someone else to come to the fore. And, and that's, that's why they're 2-0 down. Yep. And yep. I think he, he needs that. And I think it would be, it does Yanis a massive disservice to say like, oh, well, he just needs to move to the Warriors. Like mm-hmm. he's, he's better. Than, it's, it's another one like Harden, like the, the performances he's put in in the last two years two, three years have been sensational. Mm-hmm. I was lucky enough. To, I was lucky enough to watch him live against the Hornets in Paris. Oh, wow. And, um, to, to what, I mean, a, a it's lot of people unbelievable to this, watch. Yeah. A lot of people listening to this will have watched him live. Um, obviously I don't living in the UK, don't see live basketball, uh, live NBA anyway at all. Mm-hmm. Um, it was such a privilege to watch him live, you know, and, and the Hornets were up for a lot of that game. Yep. But you just got the feeling, and this is why I'm so like surprised how badly the Bucks are doing now. Um, the pandemic came at a really bad time for them. Mm-hmm. Um, bad time for everyone, to be fair, but, uh, <laughs> but particularly the Bucks. Um, he was just in control the whole time. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, you can get up by eight, you can get up by twelve. It doesn't matter. Like we're yeah. we're going to win this game. Like we're we're better than you, and I'm the best player on this court. Mm-hmm. And it was it was such a privilege to watch. Like the whole. As soon as he got the ball, the whole game just changed, you know. Yeah. And obviously, he got, he got the ball a hell of a lot, but it was always that just that feeling of okay, well, something's happening now. Yeah. And I think I think there's very few players like that. Uh, you and know, you've got you've got your amazing say, role players. Sorry, go. On. Yeah, I was going to say, is this is this the same trip we had a, a, a fan question from uh, Rory Jennings? Is this the same trip where you oh, didn't dear. take Rory to the Paris games or different? I trip? didn't know. No, yeah, he, he's. He, <laughs> <laughs> he's like a sperm lover about this trip yeah <laughs> is this the yeah. same trip yeah it's the same trip yeah oh it was, no it was, it, was Sorry, in, it was in january yeah yeah he, he was he was particularly upset because i got to meet mugsy bogues yeah and you got and, to go to a uh, rockets game and yeah, yeah exactly. a lot of good experiences I'm, I'm, and being being five foot three himself uh rory's got a lot of time for mugsy bogues so <laughs> he was he was quite upset about that uh, and I think you make a great point, though. He it insults both Scotty Pippen and Giannis. Where yeah. Scotty Pippen's top fifty all time. I mean, he's he's a legendary 100%. player. Giannis 100%. isn't quite there yet, but he I think he'll get there. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you think about even like especially bigs like Shaq. Shaq had Penny for the Magic. Then yeah. he had Kobe. Then he had Wade. I mean, he always had that elite second player. And mm. Giannis has Middleton. And you're right. It just mm. uh, if you get an elite second player in there for him. That's how teams win championships, and we see that every yep. year. Yeah. I mean, maybe he's a Shaq without Kobe. Maybe yeah. that's a probably better way to put it. Yeah. Um, all right. Next one of stupid things people are talking about on the internet. Um, did you see the Joel Embiid beef complaining about the Sixers getting rid of Jimmy Butler? Yeah. He, he was on like a little Twitter rampage, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Just like, I don't know what. It's Which is so strange for him because he's, he's usually so shy and retiring. <laughs> but he just fires it out like hitting on yeah. rihanna obviously has a great he's a legendary twitter follow yeah um, yes you've got, to, with, got to, if, if no one follows if there's someone listening to this he doesn't follow mb you've got to do it <laughs> you've got to do it so what do you think do you think uh the sixers fucked up by not uh keeping jimmy butler as he steps up and takes down the team they were built to to try to take on uh, are you team indeed he, here or are you saying he, don't argue about this and just support your gm no, I'm I'm kind of team Joel on this because the, <laughs> nice. the 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 process just isn't working, is it? Mm-mm. You know, it it, it, it again. It's it, again. There's like parallels with the Bucks here. It works and it works and it works and it works and then it doesn't. You know, and 
Jimmy Butler's one of the best players in the league. And just because it didn't, yeah, he was an ugly fit in that system, right? But great players can play together. And there's, I feel there was more they could do mm-hmm. than, I think they've prior, you know, commendably in some respects, but they prioritized the overall Sixers project ahead of who are the best players we can get. Yeah. That's a good point. And, and they've kind of, they kind of shoved Jimmy Butler out the back door. Mm-hmm. He's showing them up. You know, it's, it, all of this is very easy to say in hindsight, but, yeah. and it's, it's particularly easy for Embiid to say in hindsight. Um, he's showing them up massively now with the heat. The six are obviously already home. Um, but yeah, what, what, do you, what do you think? Do you think there's more that could have been done? I think that I overall support players airing their grievances publicly on Twitter. And so we can all watch. Yeah. <laughs> we can all agree that so that's just entertaining to me. Mm. Yeah, I mean they kept Tobias Harris instead of Jimmy Butler, um, which is probably a mistake here. But overall, people are arguing should Embiid be airing these or not? Yes, I think we both agree. It's more fun when he airs his, his grievances publicly. 100%. And he's going to. He's Joel Embiid. He's that's what to. he does every time. That's what he does, and that's why we like him. Yeah. Uh, any other uh, dumb things people are arguing about before we move on to our final segment? I think it's all been fairly unanimous, isn't it? Yeah. It's been a lot about refs, which I don't like, as we, yep, and we've said yep. before. We don't want to see people arguing about that, but yep. a lot of it's been fairly unanimous. I, 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 think it's, I think a lot of it now throws forward to these, these Western Conference. Yes. Um, this, this next round of the Western Conference, and a lot of people I've seen have been talking about that. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's finish off the pod with our picks yep. for the Western Conference semifinals. We've got Clippers Nuggets. We touched on this briefly earlier. Yeah. Who do you got in the series and why? I'd love, I'd love to say the Nuggets for you. I <laughs> no, just, I didn't I just, even pick them. Oh uh, yeah, I just can't see it. I mean, I'm going to the Clippers in five. Um, I, oh, we got one game. All right. Yeah. That's respect. Jamal yeah, Murray I, game. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and it's, it's just gonna be a different kettle of fish, isn't it? Like playing, playing against Kawhi, mm-hmm. playing against Paul George. Like it, it, it's just gonna be different. Um, can Jokic do what he did in game seven for five, six, seven games? Probably not. Mm-hmm. Can Jamal Murray explode the way that he did? Maybe for one game, maybe for two. Be amazing if he did it for three. He's not going to do it for four for or four. six. Yeah. You know? Um, and again, it just, it just comes down, it just comes around to what we've been talking about for the last, you know, 45 minutes or whatever. It's just the overall quality. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Nuggets have done fantastically uh, to make it to this stage. And I just think the Clippers will have too much of them. Yep. I, I'm going to give uh, us a little more respect. I'm going to say it's in six. Clippers win in six. Okay. I think there's going to be a Murray game and a Jokic game. I think both of them okay. will, will push us over the edge. Yeah. And then I'll be happy. Then we have no expectations to beat the Clippers. I don't yeah. want them to gut house. I think we need to keep confidence in the team and growing our younger players and seeing how they bloom. So I think if going out in six to the Clippers in the semis – we're good. Like I'll feel I mean, good is, about that as a Nuggets fan. This is the thing about the West, isn't it? You can, so tough. It's so tough. What are you going to do? Even, play the Lakers? Yeah. I mean, it, I, it, either it, side, it, you're fucked. Exactly. You know, and, and that's through the whole, through the whole, you know, conference pretty <laughs> much, you know, there's it's rough the, there. the eighth seed, you know, the eighth seed in the regular season, that was, that was looking really tough. And then you, you start, it's funny, instead of looking as, as a Kings fan, you think going, oh, can we actually do it? And you start ticking off the teams that are definitely going to make it in the West. And you get down, you, you sort like, of oh, end up ticking no. off about 12. Yeah. You end up ticking off about 12 teams. And it's like... You're well, like the Mavs are the seventh there, seed? Like yeah, with Doncic exactly. and Porzingis? Like, what are we going to do? Precisely, precisely. So, and, and you know, the Nuggets, have, the Nuggets have beaten a very, very good team mm-hmm. in the Utah Jazz with some... With some well, they've certainly beaten some incredible players. <laughs> and now just the Clippers, not, you know, it's, it's just going to be one bridge too far. And that is like the kind of folly of the West, really. But. Yep. Uh, all right, let's go to the next one. Lakers and Rockets. Skylar and I almost jinxed, jinxed this by saying it's going to be a great series between the Rockets and the Lakers after game <laughs> five. The Rockets pulled it out barely last second. So who do you got here? Uh, I've got Lakers in six. Okay. A little bit of a battle. What do you, yeah, think, what well, do you think the factors are going to be here? It's two completely contrasting styles, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's size. More than I talking. could even imagine for any other yeah. team. So that's going to be really interesting. I, uh, you know, that's, 
if, if one of those stars clicks, particularly if it's the Lakers, then I think it could be over sooner. Mm-hmm. But if it is that back and forth, we could even see a, a seven game series here. I don't, I just don't think the Rockets are quite good enough to take them all the way. That's the no. thing. I, I, I don't think it clicks quite. I mean, bear in mind, this is not a, the Lakers are not a vintage Lakers team, despite having LeBron, despite having AD. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're not, you know, I don't, I don't expect them to beat the Clippers, for example. But I don't either. I, 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 just think, I just think the Lakers will have too much of them. I think Lakers in six. What about you? Yeah, I think I agree. I think Lakers in six. I think the Rockets really uh, showed a lot of weaknesses against the Thunder. The, the role players not stepping up as much. And I think this is going to be an Anthony Davis breakout party. I think he's got mm-hmm. to come out. He's a, yep. perfect, he's a perfect match against the Rockets. I mean, there's no one that yep. can really take him on. What P.J. Tucker versus Davis, because Davis can actually shoot, unlike Stephen Adams. Um, yep. He can actually create. And so I think LeBron and Davis are, are going to be too much for the Rockets. But it's so hard to predict because if the Rockets hit 23s, it's over. Like the three ball is really the equalizer. So I think the Rockets yeah. could get lucky here. But this Lakers team, I think, will have the consistency to pull it out. And so even when the Rockets do go home after five, six, seven games, what, what, where does that leave them in terms of D'Antoni and Harden? And- yeah, I think that... I think that they'll they'll revamp the roster and probably get rid of D'Antoni. Um, yeah. I think that they, re- I mean, when they traded Capella, they basically went, all right, this is our best shot to beat the Lakers. Because if they had Capella, I think they would still be the clear favorite to lose. Yeah. Um, but yeah. the Lakers would be, still be the clear favorite. So they're like, all right, let's go small ball. We have to beat either the Lakers or the Clippers. The best way for us to do it is to hit 23s in a game four times and we'll get yeah. by them. And yeah. if they don't do that, I think Daryl Morey, their, their GM, is like, all right, that was the math behind it. We did the analytics. It didn't work. So yep. let's try to rebuild this team in other ways. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I, think, I think you'll see a little bit of sweeping changes because this will be, what, the fourth or fifth year in a row now where they just haven't broken through. Yeah. Yeah, well, they've, I mean, they've got to do something, haven't they? Because it's another one of these teams that it works and works and works and then it doesn't. So, yeah. but no, it'd be interesting. But, no, I, I agree. I expect the Lakers to, to win through. Um, all right, Rory, or not Rory, Rory, <laughs> shout out Rory. Thanks for the yeah. question on Twitter. Hello, Char- Rory. Charlie, thank you so much for joining us on our Tea Time show covering the NBA. Uh, we'd love to Rory. have you on again. I'd lo- I've loved it, Brian. It's really been really good. I'd love to come on again. All right. Thanks, man. Cheers.